Good evening. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. And the reason I'm saying good evening, as far as I know, everybody's watching this at night, so we have it all covered. Um, it, we had promised that, uh, well, I had volunteered Kalashiba Shan to stay another week. <laughs> Uh, because our visits are just so short, and uh, usually we have a real purpose in mind. Um, we either do a reading for you or we show you something, and but we never really get to talk, you know. And so she had graciously agreed to hang with me for a whole week, and we're going to talk about uh, some <laughs> some of the things that happened to us during this week, and we want to just visit with you and chat about this and that, and and one and. I can't say that other word. Anyway, that's what <laughs> we want to do today. And that's why we named the show the way we did. And um, on the opening shot, I'd like to let you know who was in the picture in case you in case you are too young and you don't know. No, not that one. The opening shot, um, and we can show it again later, um, is of President Carter, his wife, Rosalind, Martha Barnhill, um, our friend, and the other lady was um, the ambassador to Syria's wife, Mrs. Paganelli. I hope I said that okay. And we're going to talk a little bit how we ended up with this picture and things. So, having said all that, I'm going to reintroduce you and welcome Kana Shibashan to the Thanks. set. Um, we're going to, here they are, here's all the friends um, that Martha was nice enough to supply us with. So, well. Nice I'm to be back. Well, yeah, but this time you didn't have to go across the mountain again. No, I didn't. Thank goodness. You hung with it's us. It's nice, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice to hang. Yeah. Don't have to go back. Make so many trips. But, well, you had a real busy summer. I mean, it's, oh. not, it's not even summer yet, but you've been kind of crazy. Oh, just really busy. It was so much, so much. Mm -hmm. um, thing I, I guess I'd like to share was... Um, the thing that shook me the most <laughs> was the pioneer days. Uh, was um, a situation that I have, which I'm not going to talk much about because it's not settled, but it has to do with our city council. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with a traditional uh, picnic time that we usually have that got messed up. And what's ironic is it's, to me, is between two of the biggest families mm -hmm. that, was, that there were when I was a young girl. And uh, we were all peaceful and nice. And, the mother had 14 and my mother had 13. Mm -hmm. We're the biggest families in. Let me cut in for a minute. Now, mm -hmm. if you remember, Kanashiba Shan had been here and we talked about black pioneers in Boston, Washington. No. Um, and that's sort of where we're going back to. Yeah, right, because we have a picnic. What it is, right. we have a picnic that um, was started in the late 1800s, mm -hmm. early 1900s, by the blacks that came to Roslyn. Mm -hmm and it was uh, called an Emancipation Day picnic mm -hmm. to represent that. Mm -hmm. And it was celebrated in August because a lot of the blacks, because of the communication lag mm -hmm. back in the 1800s, mm -hmm. you know, uh, didn't get the news until August mm -hmm. about being freed. That's right, yeah. In and fact, I promised a show on that. I haven't got to it yet. Okay. Yeah. And so they decided to have a picnic yeah. to represent that. And my mother told me, before she died, about one of the picnics, and they had it at my ex-husband's uh, aunt's farm mm -hmm. in um, Field Point, which is in eastern Washington, approximately 10 miles from Roslyn. And they'd invite all the races, mm -hmm. and it was hundreds and hundreds of people. And then they discontinued it in the 30s, I think. Mm -hmm. And then my sister, Beulah Hart reinstated it mm -hmm. around 1978. Mm -hmm. And we've been having one ever since. Mm -hmm. And we've had the, we've used the date of August the 4th because the first Saturday in August. In August. Mm -hmm. And we ran into a little difficulties this year mm -hmm. about it. So I've been spending the last week trying to settle that because our picnic's in July. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll get settled peacefully. Yeah. And, but it's taken a lot of time, it's taken a lot of time because we're a very small town mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of money or else we would have set up, it's a big park, we would have set one here and one there, but we don't have that kind of money. Yeah. We can't even really shovel our snow in the alleys yeah. 
yeah. out in the alleys because we don't have that much money. But this Rawson's really changing. Mm -hmm. It's getting ready to uh, be dealing with a big resort called Trend West. Mm -hmm. A lot of tourists, yeah. It's going to have a lot of tourists. They have a 30-year plan development. They're going to be developing 7,000 acres. Mm -hmm of forest land that is now not considered forest land, but it's considered whatever land so they can develop it. It's supposed to have two Olympic-sized swimming mm -hmm. pools, a 660-bed hotel, no. a thousand condos, two golf courses, and uh, two big Olympic-sized swimming pools. But you already have 16 graveyards. Or 20. I think we have 20 different graveyards. You have 20 now, so imagine. And we're really unique. Yeah. And so because of uh, that, I think we had a little problem after Oct uh, last year mm -hmm. around the cemeteries that we yeah. were working with with the city council. It took a year and a half, we solved it. Yeah. And we're going to share most of the, you want to say power, it's not really power. What happened is the lodges a long time ago mm -hmm. used to bury their dead. Right. Because people didn't have any money. Yeah. And that's why there were no gravestones yeah. in the many of the cemeteries. There are now because the young people are buying gravestones mm -hmm. for their um, passed on right. grandmothers and great grandmothers and things like that. And so um, when people died, the different nationalities didn't want to be buried together. That's right, Ken. So that, the that's Northern Pacific, which mm -hmm. uh, owned most of the town <laughs> and the land, uh, decided to give each person their own graveyard. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how we got so many, each uh, nationality its own graveyard, so we got almost 20 graveyards in a town that's only about 1,500 people. That's right. <laughs> and it draws people from all over the world. You see, um, you and I is, happens to be born maybe for even for this purpose, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we, get, we shake it over uh, here and then we move it over yeah. here. And what happens is sometimes we find ourselves in, in an almost impossible situation where we're forced to speak up yes. and therefore make changes. Yes. And that's how, I think, how President Kardec fit in our show here. We're going yes. to get back to that a little that's later. That's okay. Um, because he, as a person, really did make a difference. He did. So, and look, even now, he is still moving. Mm -hmm. And he's very, very uh, involved in Habitat for the Humanities. That's right. Where yeah. he helps people to build their own house. Yeah. And a friend of mine built a house that way. Yeah. And she had to put so much energy in herself, in herself which yeah. I think is wonderful, but others came in to help her. Yeah. And it was her first house. She yeah. had three children. Yeah. And she happened to get one of the houses. Yeah. See, so because it's sometimes if we go through these experiences and here again they're very stressful and it forces the people around us to make a change so we are either universal troublemakers <laughs> yeah sometimes we're called troublemakers, uh, troublemakers. <laughs> um uh, uh, yeah we just serve this purpose to bring about change yeah and, and i think that's what the shows that are going to be about today, huh? Change, a lot yeah. of changes. Let's get back to your picnic. So for 12 years, everything's been 27. 27. Mm -hmm. We had two times when mm -hmm. uh, we, they made a mistake and gave it to someone else, and we gave our time up. Right. And that's what probably brought this shaking them up and moving. <laughs> yeah. I felt that we gave it up willingly three times when they made, when they made a mistake. But this time, I just thought we couldn't move it. We couldn't move on. Mm -hmm. We had to change it. And I also felt that hopefully out of it will come something where our generations after us won't have to sh move and shake them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the date will be maybe put not in stone, but possibly it'll, we'll have a resolution that says it is our day mm -hmm. on paper. Right, and as a result of that, if I my memory serves me correctly, that you now, so it doesn't get mixed up again, you now have an official Black Pioneer Day. We will, I think we will have. We'll I think have, that's yeah. very much an offing and when I go home and finish what I'm trying to shake and move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm not a mover and a shaker. I really, like you said, I might have been designated to come to move and shake, but I don't really wish to do that. 
but I have the skills. Yeah. And I'm put in a position where I'm the only one in Roslyn. Yeah. My sister was gone. My other yeah. sister moved out. And I'm the only black person in Roslyn that can do it for the generations, because mm -hmm. there are no more that can do it. I have a couple of brothers, but one had a heart, two of them had a heart attack, yeah. <laughs> and the others can't do it. So I'm kind of forced yeah. by circumstances yeah, I mean, to do it. I have to, for mm -hmm. others, not for myself. Yeah. And I was the only person in Thurston County, probably in the whole state, that lost their home to, due to the earthquake. Wow. And so that was shaken that, that, up. It shook up a whole lot of things. And here it is four months after the fact, and I'm still not settled. Um, let me give you a real quick rundown. I've made reference to the earthquake before, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some of the friends want to about the earthquake predictions. So okay. uh, let me tell you my story real quick go and ahead. then we'll go there. Okay. Um, I heard a noise the night before the earthquake. I knew it was coming because of the predictions that we had made here. And uh, we said earthquake, earthquake, earthquake. So we, I knew that was the first one. I packed all my documents. Uh, I slept with my shoes on. <laughs> uh, the earthquake hit. I couldn't make it to the door. I mean, it threw me clear across the place. Um, we, all the food exploded and just blew up, and um, so we recovered. I recovered from that, and uh, everything wouldn't broke. Uh, he, one of my statues here is in the front. I mean, his head just cracked mm -hmm. clear across, and he was in direct line of where I was. So I'm uh, glad he took that blow for me. Mm -hmm. So then, 12 days later, I got wet tagged because my home was in non sinkhole. And uh, so the city came and said, well, you got to go. And, and I did that. And then FEMA came. And uh, this is where it starts what you have to expect when the next one comes. Yes. Um, FEMA came and asked me a lot of questions. And I answered them to the best of my ability. Um, a week later, I had some extra money in my bank account. And I thought it was a donation from a friend. So I wanted to uh, thank him. Mm -hmm. And so I called the bank to find out where the money had came from, and they said FEMA. And, uh, well, but I had insurance, so I immediately had to return the FEMA money because I had earthquake insurance. Oh, I didn't and, know you had to do that. Yeah, so I became an insurance baby, excuse mm -hmm. me. It was all downhill, all downhills from then. The Red Cross put me in a hotel. Um, they sort of took care of me for two weeks. Then, um, then it was decided that uh, my house was going to be pulled out of the hole and taken somewhere else. But nobody wanted to be responsible for fixing it if it <laughs> fell apart. Um, as you know, I have a whole glass room mm -hmm. that would have had to be, uh, you know, dissembled. Um, the nice insurance person left and they dumped everything in my lap. They said, here's a check for you, lady. Move your house and <laughs> i see you later. And because of the insurance, I wasn't able to get help from any of the oh, agencies. That's important for people to know that. I was not able to. Then when people say, well, are you OK? Mm -hmm. And you say, I hope you had insurance. I well, see. I do. So in their mind, I am now OK. Mm -hmm. Not true. The worst thing that can happen to you doing an earthquake is to have earthquake insurance, <laughs> you know because you're just totally on your own. So in the meantime, I decided I wasn't going to move my home. Mm -hmm. I was just going to abandon it, and I have done that. And then trying to get into something else with no money is... Very difficult. Yeah. Um, you just become a homeless person. I was shocked. Yeah. And the things that I've learned as a homeless person, um, we, we have done shows on homeless you know, subjects and mm -hmm. things like that. And because it was, it is so far removed from the actual earthquake that it doesn't, really doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. They make it totally impossible for people to move into places because you have to give references. Um, you have to have credit. Um, you have, you know, yeah. if, so if you don't have any money, and you wouldn't have if you're just a you victim can. of the earthquake. If you lost your house, you oh. don't have a prior landlord for three or four or five right. months. And it's totally impossible for you to move anywhere. Um, it's pretty bad. So what I suggest for the friends um, to mm -hmm. have a plan. Okay. 
you know, look at the whole thing and and learn from what I've went through. So I can at least feel there was a reason for me having to experience that. So what would you, what would you suggest that they look out for, or what should they do? What's going to happen is you get the best and the worst in people. Mm. Do not expect anyone to solve your problem for okay. you. Okay. Uh, look out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, expect to lose some friends along the way. Because, uh, because my circumstances changed so many times that some of my friends couldn't emotionally deal with what, with, with what was happening to me to the point where um, they had to go to a doctor. Oh, and so, really? of course, you know, they had to disassociate yes. themselves from my situation. And uh, that was hard for me to deal with, but I do fully understand, you know, why that happened. Well, you know, if um, you going, if you went through that as a single person, just one person, yeah. then I wonder how many other people had to go through that, or if there's a bigger earthquake, the for problems that would really be, mm -hmm. we'd have to face. From what I understand, the, the dilemma that I ran into was very, um, had to do with me. Okay. Um, and I believe there was only one other total casualty, property casualty, uh, a lady uh, high up there in age. And then, but then FEMA, from what I understand, FEMA replaced her home. Okay. You see. Replaced her home because yeah. she owned it. And yeah. it was. But so did I, but I had insurance. But yeah, and she didn't have. She didn't have. I see. Well, my brother, and I live in eastern Washington, and um, my brother had to move out of his house because of the earthquake, mm -hmm. but he was renting. Yeah. So he's now living with his mother-in-law. It's a, it's a, I tell you, they, they tell you, you got to mm -hmm. go, you got to go, and, you know, that's just Because he has to is. get, you know, earn enough money now, and he's retired. Yeah. So he has to try to wait till he can build up enough money for the down payment on a place, which is expensive. Yeah. Those down payments can run anywhere from over there probably up to $5,000, $1,500 first and last month's rent. That's right. another thousands of, because the rental probably is more like eight, 600 for a three bedroom house over there yeah. now. And, or, and, and then you fill out the papers where, where did yeah. you live? Well, I live with my right. mother. Well, why? Why do you live with your mother? Right. Well, yeah. Well, I lost earthquake. my home in the earthquake. Yeah. Well, well, that's, well there cares? it might work. There it might work. Yeah. I'm not sure. But uh, that's one of the problems um, homelessness. Homelessness. Yeah, from the earthquakes. Now, housing, uh, uh, people get housing. Uh, through the Housing Authority, um, Section 8, through HUD for yes. low income mm -hmm. or disabled persons, they will get a subsidy uh, from housing. Well, the earthquake, the earthquake upset a lot of people's apple carts there also because they could not go into the affordable rent that they should have had, you see. And so now as a result, what happened to me, um, I understand they are rethinking the um, they, they are rethinking the um, the guidelines of section eight of section eight really? right because some of the vents are so high so even as one person uh, it might be better for families and so so to make a long story longer here a lot of good things happened mm -hmm. um, on the shaker and mover type mm. front because what happened to me and um, it's, it's horrible. It's still, I, I still cannot comprehend um, everything that really took place. I think my higher self kind of took over, you know. And that lady donated some VCR so I could, you know, copy the shows. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the friends uh, sent me money. And it brings out the goodness on other side, though. A lot of goodness right. is brought out from other people. Yeah. You know, they kind of, kind of pull together to help others mm -hmm. that are in the because they suffered a little bit of that yeah. problem you have, but not all of it, so they understand. Yeah. So, the mil so the help comes immediately. Mm -hmm. See, yes. That's the point. Uh, right For away, a short time. people, you know, people come and they want to help and they mm -hmm. want to bring you this, and they say, well, what all do you need? Well, you need everything, mm -hmm. except you don't know where to put it. <laughs> but, but 
the further you get away <coughs> from the actual occurrence, yes. the more help you really need. That's true. It, it's, it's too expensive to be homeless. A person it is. can afford it. Mm -hmm. It's really very, and it's very difficult to go through homelessness. Mm -hmm. I've only went through it once that I remember, and I slept in the car with my children. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was only off and on for maybe three months. But you, three, I know what three months <laughs> not having a home feels like. It felt it was terrible. terrible. My God. But it wasn't behind an earthquake, but mm -hmm. it's still homelessness. Yeah. But I think um, we may have to put programs in the government and maybe the communities where it's long-term help That's for like six need. months. Yeah, long-term Not help. just come in the first yeah. month and excuse me, sometimes while TV is sh light is shining, Mm -hmm. But after, yeah. after, because a lot of time there's a lot of psychological or depression, yeah. a lot of mental depression after natural disasters. Mm -hmm. And of course it's caused by the disasters of trauma by itself, yeah. and then trying to get back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. But you never do. No, you, you, you never, get, never back. get back. You never get you just back never get completely, back to do normal. you? Mm -hmm. Do you feel quite a little normal now or a little more so that when you seem to be getting things back to where you will have housing? No, not at all. I oh. feel like I started a whole new lifetime and oh. I look back two months and I'm thinking, who's this person? But this is interesting. Uh, one of the friends uh, from Texarkana, doing all this turmoil, uh, she, uh, she sent me a bottle of Paloma Picasso. That's my favorite perfume. Uh -huh. And uh, it arrived in, arrived in the mail right when I was so vulnerable. And when I squirted that perfume on myself, it's like by scent, I oh, recognized snake. who I was. Oh. And it brought me back to, oh, here I am. I can do this. And wow. so mm -hmm, now, the bottle cost $80. And so it would sound like um, somebody was to say, well, what could you have done with $80? Mm -hmm. yeah. But this bottle of perfume was worth a million to it me. It helped you ground. Because it helped me ground. And she told a story that uh, she was obsessed with buying me this perfume. Uh, she's oh. way up in, way in Texas, mm -hmm. and she just had to go buy this particular perfume. That's something. And so that helped me a whole yeah. lot. So it was... Uh, those little things like that is ways we can help people after mm -hmm. they go through those situations. Yeah. Sometimes little things move things too, yeah, and shake things. Happened, yeah. But I don't recognize myself anymore. Oh, you went through quite a change. I, I, I did. Now my health got a lot better. Um, if you look at my neck, yeah, you my haven't complained um, about your neck. No, I used to. This is good for the viewers. Yes. If you remember, I used to apologize at the beginning of the show for coughing. Mm -hmm. I am not coughing at all. Isn't that something? At no time. My, the swelling in my neck is gone. I'm no longer living on toxins. Um, great things have happened mm -hmm. since then. Maybe that had to shake you up to move. It did. Sometimes we got to get shook up before we make a it's move because we don't want to make yeah, a change. Just get get out of here. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I want to back to the president here for a minute. Now, a, a person that I really liked him as a president. I did too. Yeah, I liked that Libra energy. Balance, and really mm -hmm. tried to balance things. Yeah. And he's very good in um, international relations. And, yeah, and that goes back to the predictions mm -hmm. that we made last week. Now, now, you see, with the Libra energy, he would weigh one thing against the other. And you know what's, what's interesting is I think many Americans um, saw him as weak mm -hmm. because as a Libra, you you really try to work toward peace. Right. And you'll, as a Libra, you'll take longer mm -hmm. to work at that. And in the process of working longer, you'll be seen as, uh, quote, quote, unquote, chicken, uh, not strong. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is mentally trying to figure out how you can get to this peaceful thing without a war. Yeah. And so that's why I think a lot of times he's looked on as a person who wasn't very strong. Yeah, but look look at all the wonderful things he's yes, still doing. No. He is, he's doing wonderful things. In fact, I think he was sent on a peace type of meeting, but I don't remember the year. I, I don't either. I've been but to from, several. From what I understand, the picture that we showed you, that was um, mm -hmm. my our friend Martha um, in the picture there with him, and he that was taken at the embassy in Damascus, Syria. Do you know what year? 
it's probably on the back of the picture, okay. but if I bend down, I'm Yeah, you can't bend down, but at least, yeah, he was really quite a peaceful person and got along well with many different people of different religions, you know, countries and cultures yeah. and things, but that's a Libra trait. So what we saw last week in, on, the, on our update of predictions, uh, mm -hmm. if, if they take him and if they take President Carter and send him somewhere, maybe mm -hmm. he can be a little helpful because we had him for some hard times. And one thing that's kind of interesting, though people may not want to mention his name right now, is Jesse Jackson is also a Libra. Is he? Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so what is Mr. Sharpton? I don't know. I thought he was a Leo, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I checked him out one time, mm -hmm. and I don't know what President uh, Bush is. I think he's a Gemini, but I'm not sure. I believe he is too, and he came I in on in Mars energy. He came yeah. in, which when the president enters in Mars energy, and the only reason I know that is because I read it. Um, my friend Edie, she has mm -hmm. a has a person that that puts things on the web page that I find very mm -hmm. accurate, and I try to remember mm -hmm. some of that. Um, and this president came in on Mars energy. Oh boy! And that is Mars is a sign of war and war. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mars is a god of war. Mm -hmm. and the planet represents that. So, so the most calls we got on the earthquake thing. Um, and we said there was going to be three. So we had mm -hmm. the first one in February. Yeah, we said there'd be three. We had a, we had a shaker um, a few weeks ago. It was only yes. five o. Yeah. But back they to the glass Olympia, room. They me. Yeah, back to the glass room. I was thinking, how could I save that glass room? Because if for the friends that read the book, they know how this was um, mm -hmm. built. And that five shaker, I mean, it just cracked it straight across the foundation. The glass room. All the glass rooms, like it was going to say, just uh, give it up, Lillian. Mm -hmm. Just, just, <laughs> just give it up. It. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it, do you think that was the second one? Yes, I do. Okay. I do. Second one that we recognized, you know, that we felt on the seismograph. Uh huh. Because I think sometimes we have small ones, like California has tiny ones all the time, yeah. which is a place that I'm scared to go to because I was in one of theirs and. My friend slept through it, and I, it woke me up, and I mm -hmm. caught the <laughs> airplane the next day, and she said, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you shake sometimes through an earthquake, it's, it moves me, mm -hmm. okay, and I leave <laughs> or do what I have to do. But I think there's another one coming. I really don't when. Someone asked me when. All I can tell you is I feel it, and I feel it once a week that it's coming, and I feel I don't know how bad it's going to be, and not bad, but how strong this because there's no bad or good. But I don't know how strong it's going to be, but I think it's going to shake them, and I think it's going to move them. And I think the shaking and the moving is not just a physical thing, but I think it, if the, it, the universe, I use that word universe, uh -huh. um, sometimes it's the only way to move us. Yeah. We've got to be shook up because sometimes we have a tendency to be complacent. Mm -hmm. And we like where we are, and we don't want to go nowhere, and we don't yeah. want to uh, go and maybe make a change in our life. Yeah. Because usually a move creates a change. It and does. And humans yeah. don't like change. Now, funny you should say, I was trying to purchase a place in in a place, and it, things didn't work out for me. Um, I, I <laughs> the moving yeah. date got moved and moved and moved, and ironically, it turned out later that. I found something else, and I will be living like 300 feet over from where I thought I was going to go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes 300 feet can make all the difference. And 300 is a pretty powerful number. It's a three of completion is it? of things, yes. Mm -hmm. Powerful number. Yeah. So sometimes we're, we don't want to move, but if we, when the move is made, we can see the reason why we made it, and we don't feel so bad. Mm -hmm. But I really feel through life, that there's going to be things that happen that shake us mm -hmm. and force us to move on mm -hmm. and off of where we, you know, this perch you want to stay on because it's so comfortable. Which takes us to the owl. Um, after that little five zero, <coughs> I told my grandchildren I'm going to go to the plane and, you know, to the uh, astral plane mm -hmm. to see what I can find out because I wanted to know was that the second earthquake uh -huh. we were talking about. And I was gone a whole hour Earth time, mm -hmm. and I ran into one hour. One hour. That's all I could That's find. That's it. And then maybe you want to tell. Well, um, 
according to a lot of Native American legends, um, when you hear the owl call your, you know, hear the owl call your name, it means that you may pass. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that definitely means you have to die. Yeah, I right. think maybe it's changes. New, new I really mm -hmm. think changes. Right. It represents mm -hmm. the owl that you saw represents change, and it yeah. also in our, well, I'm, and when I say owl, black, the black race, an owl represents um, wisdom. Wisdom. Yeah, mm -hmm. and wisdom comes through experiences. Yeah. And learning from those experiences, see? And I think we're in an experiential time. Right, in, in, in a time like that. And then the, the same day you ran in, accidentally ran into an owl book, no? I did. I have a <laughs> book that's called I Heard the Owl Call My Name. And I never recognized it was uh, written by a Margaret Craven in my a maiden name was Craven, and I think somewhere back, and I'm in genealogy, I'm a tracer, I think somewhere she's connected to me. Mm -hmm. And I forgot that I had read it, so uh, it fell down. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know where it came from, because I was moving books and everything around, doing some spring cleaning, and it fell in my lap. The same day? The same day yeah. you called. Yeah. And I said, wow, I wonder what that means, but it's about a young man who was dying, mm -hmm. and he went to an Indian village, and I think it was somewhere on the coast here, and he gets healed through the whole mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. He doesn't die, I don't believe, but if he does, uh, it, it has to do with uh, him thinking he's gonna die, Yeah, you say. Just changes, But yeah. di death sometimes can be changes, changes. death mm -hmm. to the old way, yeah. and something new coming on. And usually after earthquakes mm -hmm. and natural disasters of floods yeah. that so been so terrible in Texas, there's going to be change. You you have to change mm -hmm. because you can no longer do what you've been doing. It's not there anymore. Yeah. You see. Yeah. And so um, I think the, like uh, Carter that he brought around a lot of changes. He tried to do his best. He was a wonderful president. Mm -hmm. Him and his wife were very very good. But um, one of the, one of the things that I like about Mr. Carter was his mother, uh, because oh, his name, mom. Well, you know my 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 name is Lillian. Oh, and hers was Lillian, wasn't it? So, but. But they could, wouldn't pronounce it properly. So when Mrs. Carter's mother came along, they called her Miss Lillian. Yes, uh -huh, that's right. So for right. a while I became Miss Lillian. Miss and Lillian. I said, oh good, somebody <laughs> finally knows how to. And that's my earliest memories mm -hmm. of President Carter. So he, he was instrumental in people. Yeah. Uh, it's still not correct, but it was closer than what, no. what they used to call he me. He has a great that. love for humanity. Yeah. And that's why the Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. he pour so much of his own energy and plus yeah. money. Yeah. But to give someone a home yeah. is a very powerful thing. To help them to get a home. Yeah. And that's one of the things I feel that will hopefully something will shake something and move something so the young people now mm -hmm. can have um, access to buying a home. It's so very difficult right now for them. So when we find ourselves into these almost impossible situations, um, it's important for your friends to stick with you. Yes. Not necessarily make y your problems there. You, and I'm talking. Uh, let me refer, let me s switch that mm -hmm. word from from I. Let's talk about me okay. as an I family. Uh -huh. I do not expect anyone to make my problem their own. Sometimes uh, when they say, well, how was your day? Just the fact that I can tell you, I don't expect you to change it. Mm -hmm. So whenever you have a person in crisis, um, it's really important that you sort of hang with them, yes. if you know what I mean. I do. And when you, when you tell a story more than to three or four people, you get so where you say, did I tell you this already? Because in a way you can't remember mm -hmm. who you told it to. Right. And then, you know, say to your friend, well, if maybe you did, let's see. And then, but stick with your friends. Do not turn your back on them at a time like this. I think that's really, really important there. Mm -hmm. But then that's also where you find out who your friends are. That's an easy term. But when it really happens, it yes. sort of hits the, the core of your soul yeah. because you've already being shook up and mm -hmm. it's very and difficult it's, it's, they have it's, another loss mm -hmm. it's really hard and yeah. so what i've learned is to release people off the responsibility to have to do that and um 
make it their choice. Mm -hmm. But the reason I said, please don't do that is because I wouldn't want anyone to experience what I did. Now when you're already in trauma and then a friend right. leaves you, it's another loss, right. it's another trauma. It, it was almost like a death. It is, it's a loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it really was. And when that next shaker comes, and it will just, just, you know, just. I think it's gonna shake a little more. Just, yeah, more. And more move intense. a little more of the ground, and yeah. move a lot more lives. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know that we can change it. We can try to send love and light out, but I don't know that. I think we've already put it into motion. Yeah. Um, but do be there for your friends. Be there. You don't have to give of no. money. No. You don't have to give of uh, material things. Uh, to give your ear. That, I found that to be very important. When someone's yeah. down and they're trying to figure out how to rebuild their lives, for you to just to hear what they're going through, not you don't get upset it. and try right. to solve yeah. it. Because mm -hmm. the other person doesn't necessarily want you to yeah. solve their problem. No. They want you to listen and maybe yeah. if you have some idea how you can help them, yeah. how they, you can help themselves, they don't mind. Yeah. But they need someone to listen, yeah. to listen. And the rules, see, people change rules, uh, like every day um, you have to, there's a different set of rules. And I can really see how people feel more comfortable living under a bridge, because all they have to be concerned with at that time is uh, warmth, um, food, food, and to get shelter. out of the rain. And the rest of the time is your own. Uh, you okay. know, you can enjoy the flowers and the birds and things like that. But when you put in a position where, where you end up with a lot of baggage that you really didn't need, it's like after the quake, um, I feel universe gave me everything that I needed. Mm -hmm. So when I was allowed to throw my computer out of the window and it didn't crack, but then <laughs> as time went on, you know, uh, it was, well, you need to do this and you need to get this. And, and then I found myself with all the stuff that wasn't, relevant to me but to everyone else and then I ended up having to worry about the stuff. Well, who so are the people telling you have to get the stuff? Um, agencies. Okay, and, okay. You know, the, mm -hmm. you know, people in the system like okay. that. So, so the whole thing is you have to allow each person to make their own decisions as to, to their needs. Yeah, that was the other thing. Mm. Yeah. You learned quite a bit, didn't you? I'm not done yet. I'm, <laughs> not I'm, done yet. I'm at, the, at the tail end of it, but here again, I would like to think that, you know, I can pass that on where people can learn because it will shake again. Uh, prediction show, we saw about Mount Rainier. Uh, yes. Uh, maybe we didn't, maybe it was a private. We didn't say much about it. Was it a it. private conversation, maybe? No, I don't know, but it, uh, we did talk a little bit about Mount Rainier. Mm -hmm. But I know a long time ago, the reason I believe it's very close this has been about 30 years mm -hmm. <laughs> since I had my vision. <laughs> That's a long vision. Long vision. Most visions don't last, you know, they happen yeah. within 30 years. Yeah. But the minister in my church had the same one. Yeah. And the vision was a Mount Rainier going off. Yeah. And I know exact timing was when the kids were getting out of the school. Wow. And then it triggered the other four, three mountains because they're connected. Right. And they've been rumbling a little anyway off yeah. and on the different ones. And it caused a big problem in Seattle well, and in Washington State. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, the earthquake taught us that um, we cannot evacuate the, the, these people. But that's the, going to be one of the biggest problems is evacuation. Yeah. It's just impossible to do with our, the way our roads are the built traffic, nothing, and the, yeah. the amount of traffic we have. I don't know how they could do it, even if they got all the helicopters that they could get. It seems impossible. Yeah, yeah, you can't do it. So what do you tell a person? Uh, our background here, that was, that was actually given to me by a man named Doug. Um, and I met him because of the earthquake. Oh. And so he made some like opening shots. So thank oh. you. Thank you for showing that, how appropriate. Look, see the monitor oh, yes. there? He painted that, yeah, and I, oh. um, and so, so now, here is that again, Mount Rainier or a mountain? No, that's Mount Rainier, I okay. think. Okay. But you see, because that I met all these wonderful people yeah. that I would not have. Other lives. O other and lives. that's why I don't think there's no accidents. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't have met a mother unless the circumstance had happened. Yeah. 
So uh, if people can maybe take a little bit and think, well, maybe things couldn't have been different, that'll help within yourself to not feel like you should have known better, you should have listened. You know, like people say, well, the animals get quiet. They did. There's signs. And so when you don't get the signs and it happens, there's a little guilt there. Now, speaking of signs, and all this is listed on my webpage, by the way, there were signs. There yes, were signs. There were. Uh, the water was, uh, as it coming into the bay, it was running, coming in, and it was started to run backwards. Um, there were so many, there were just so many signs. Uh, mm -hmm, but we didn't um, get them. Joint pain, uh -huh. uh, dizziness, uh, this whole frequency thing that we mm -hmm. talk about. But there were. I think the biggest one we missed is everybody was itching. I mean, almost not just regionally. Yeah. Oh. And we were still trying to figure out what, what that the itch meant. meant. <laughs> and, and here it was. So this time, you know, if you make a note of what to look for, then maybe we can. When you live in the south, we have uh, uh, storm houses, you know. Yes. Yeah. And I so heard they have. Yeah. yeah. So if you know they, what to look for, you. And get they go down to the. But I don't know in an earthquake, what can you do here in the city if there's a big earthquake? Uh, get under tables, get under. Uh, no, uh, that's not where I was going with that. Um. Uh, just, know, just know that it's come and have your document. Uh, feel comfortable, you know, where you know where your children are. Yes, that's do, an do important one. you know how many one. people don't know what their kids got on when they went to school in no, the morning? No, that's an important one. Yeah. To know where your children are and to be able to reach yeah. them, it must be a fear that comes with those things. It is, yeah. See. So those are just little things that, yeah. that we can do. Because uh, the cellular phones are, go out. Yeah, they did. Or a jam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I don't know how you could uh, de uh, designate even now, and there's mm -hmm. an earthquake today or tomorrow, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, to your child a place where you can meet them. Yeah. If there's an emergency like that. But they really don't have a choice because the That's schools true. will keep them till you get there. Now we had unless a release we, we, from we, the school. Uh, we had six. Now we had six children in four schools, and it took hours to do that. But they do not let the children leave, even if you were to say, "Meet me at such and such a place." But that's only if they're at it's school time. What if it's before they get to school? What if it's on a Saturday, Sunday? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. In school, you know they'll be there. Yeah. Saying that's good. But, uh, if you had to give a shake up and move out, a move, a shake or move award to anyone living at this time. A shake or move or what? Award. Award. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> I'd have to think on that one. Long time? Yes. We got I don't maybe really, five or six minutes. I don't think there's been much moving or shaking for approximately. I feel that with America and some of the world's been in a very apathetic state. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they've been shaking or moving. <laughs> so, so I think the earthquake's really the no first one. thing. <laughs> I think the earthquake and the floods are the thing that's the first thing that shook us up. I do believe maybe a little of the election shook up a little, but not, I know it didn't because I deal with quite a few people mm -hmm. and it didn't shake them up that much. Mm -mm, but I think the earth, disasters are the thing that's going to shake us up. Mm -hmm. I really do. I don't think there's been much shaking through our human hands very much in quite a few years. Mm -hmm. It's been a very peaceful, quiet, reflecting time. The economy's been good. Yeah, people are very comfortable, aren't they? Yeah, well, when the economy's good, we are. Mm -hmm. When things go well, we don't move, and we don't want anything shaking it up. Mm -hmm. That's you see? Cool, yeah. <laughs> so you, that's why I, I think sometimes the natural disasters come to move us and shake us up, mm -hmm. and then it shakes up our thinking too. See, because we don't like moving and shaking in any way. Not really, not the human. Mm -hmm. um, human. We uh, so now we have been shook up in this area. And uh, even the earthquakes in other places have, I don't know if they have quite a bit, some of them, so they're not as shook up about it except the damage done. 
but we don't have them often, see. Well, yeah, but see, uh, on, on, a, on a global scale, there is just so many There's of them. There's so many so, been this so, year. You know, and see, Within this if they year. only reported anything over 3.5. Okay. And so every day you have earthquake here as a 6.2 and a 6.2, and we acknowledge that, and it's, it has became a habit uh, to watch TV and uh, not, not what, what am I saying? We have gotten used to seeing earthquakes announced on television at all time. Mm -hmm. So when something really happened, it just goes right over your I head. I see. Because and they don't announce it if it's under that. Right. Much either, mm -hmm. see. But when you're talking about movers and shakers, I was thinking that something that just happened that didn't shake me might not shake you, but I think it shook people who vote a lot or the people who are in the administration when the gentleman moved his party. That, that was a shakeup. That there. was a big it shakeup because uh, it threw off the balance of political power in the government. That's right. Yeah. And that shook. That was the second biggest shakeup. Mm -hmm. Earthquake first. So we <laughs> and give, floods and then that. Yeah. We give him the Vanne Up Award. How's that? Yeah, I would give it to him. I would give him the award because <laughs> he shook things mm -hmm. up and it took a lot. I don't know the reason he did. It doesn't matter to me, but it took a lot. A lot of guts. A lot, yeah, thank you for saying that. I have a hard time using those words. <laughs> but <laughs> it took a lot of guts, lot of guts and uh, mm -hmm. to do that and yeah. stay. Yeah. Because you know it did. For to change party yeah. in the middle of the stream or anything in the middle of the stream takes a lot. But uh, that's going to shake up. I think it shook a lot of people up and made them start thinking, well, now I'm going to have to think a little different. Mm -hmm. Just a little different now because we don't. There's a balance now. Mm -hmm. I don't have this up over someone else, so it's not going to go as easy. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to have to mediate. So do you think he thought of it himself, or it was a little divine intervention here? Well, I think there was divine intervention and other invention and intervention, too. <laughs> <laughs> Some human intervention. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a little push from the human side. Yeah. But I definitely think that the overall was in divine. Divine. Because I was concerned yeah. about the way it was set up right now, yeah. especially after the election and Supreme Court thing. Yeah, I, I think we talked about that yeah. last week, but you and I talked we about did. the Supreme Court. Yeah. We call it so, the Supreme Court thing. And yeah, thing. So that mm -hmm. bothered me a little bit because it swung the power a certain way. Yeah. And now it's swinging back where it's balanced. And I think that's the way it should be, is balanced. And then people have to work with other people. Yeah. And That's we're living true. with other people. Yeah. We're existing with other people. We're uh, playing, you know, recreating with other people. And the earth is shrinking. It is. We are going to have to learn as a nation. And I love this nation. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best nation in the world, even though I critique it. Yeah. <laughs> but I critique it you with love. It. I critique it with and love. You pick it. And I pick it. <laughs> when something's wrong, I have to let them know. Yeah. But I think we're the best we're, uh, nation in the world, but I think we can improve. And I don't know, my, I'm talking about me, mm -hmm. since we're just chatting. Uh, I feel that we've got to work on taking better care of our elderly. I'm sorry. Yeah. We have to take better care of our elderly. and We must take better care, and I mean that. I don't mean putting them in nursing homes and having wonderful nursing homes. Yeah. Okay, I mean to do to them like we would want done to us mm -hmm. if we were there and our children. Except when you're young, you can't comprehend what you want done to you. Well, I don't believe that because I did. You, you did? I did. I made... I, I did. I did. A lot of them don't. I know that I was unique. I guess you I know are, I was unique yeah. because when I was 12, I used to think, well, one of the reasons was my mother took care of elderly. Mm -hmm. They died in our home. We took care of them until they died. So that's why I probably did, you see. Mm -hmm. And there are people that are, are people I knew and that loved me. Yeah. And so I start thinking about this as a child. Mm -hmm. But now I knew that they didn't have homes. People couldn't take them in because of whatever reason. And that they, there were nursing homes that they went to. And my mother always said she didn't want to go. Old people used to say I didn't want to go to a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And most older people that were over 70, if they went, they didn't stay more than a week. They passed on. Yeah. And I see this now a lot. Yeah. And uh, so that's where I probably acquired my love for the elderly and my 
feeling of wanting to take care of them. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm elderly, because I'm 68, I'm not worried about anybody taking care of me. And you still chop on wood. Because I still <laughs> chop wood, and my, I've been genetically given a strong body and mind, and, um, but I never know that that won't stop. Yeah. It's poor health care. I have no health care. I have Medicare, but you yeah. just told me about Medicare. <laughs> Last week, <laughs> so, yeah. So. so I don't know that I have that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they have helped build this country so the younger people could have what they got. Mm -hmm. And I think they're to be rewarded by us taking care of them. Phys right now, they don't give you glasses on Medicare. I want you to know, because these things I thought you had. Yeah. When I was younger, I didn't know this. I did not know they had to pay a certain amount of money for their Medicare out of their Social Security mm -hmm. check. I'm telling people, because a lot of people I'm sure you do not know. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, <laughs> I found out <laughs> that you have to pay so much out of your Social Security card, I mean Security check, and you cannot get eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. You cannot get dental care. Mm -hmm. Okay? You definitely can't get eyeglasses. So. Those things are things your eyes fail as you get older, yeah. your teeth fall out as you get older. These are the things older the people need. Yeah. And I, all they want is the necessities and right. uh, to be appreciated for what they did to help this country. Yeah. We're the richest country in the world. Look at the vets. I mean, yeah. uh, I've been, I was an army wife for many years and uh, I was under the impression that uh, there came a time in our lives where we would have free medical, yeah. but guess what? It's not free? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, no. Uh, you go down, you go anywhere. Most of the homeless people are people that have been in the military. Uh, they've had emotional problems yes. because of the wars and yes. things, and don't quit that criteria that mm -hmm. I, you know, like we said earlier, in order to move to an apartment, you got to be this, and you got to be this, and if you're flawed, Yes. Whether by race or by health or by money or by anything. Or whatever. If you flock, you can't. can't you can't fit that criteria. You don't get in homes. You sleep under you a bridge. And then hmm? you're moved out of your sleeping places at times That's when they right. want to develop it. That's right. You see, so we have so. to also take care of our homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would ask yeah. for the younger people, our America. That's what yeah. I would ask. But the new activists don't look at things the way we did. Is that right? Are they more radical or, or just more insensitive? I think uh, they don't work toward the whole picture, but part of that picture. Part of the picture. That, yeah. That's a good analysis. Because when we were activists, and my sister was the welfare rights, um, head of welfare rights in the central area, my other sister was the head of welfare rights in the north end. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was other young, other people, and the young helped us a little, not mm -hmm. much. Because they wanted things fast, yeah, but it was long term, long -term. and uh, we yeah. uh, fought for open housing, yeah. for women's rights, mm -hmm. all these rights all at once. Yeah. See, and this seems to be more broken down yeah. to separate segments to struggle for, and there's not the togetherness mm -hmm. where the teachers, where we'd be marching for the teachers, but we would be maybe a. Um, Civil, uh, not civil rights, but uh, we uh, we would be struggling for race uh, mm -hmm. th balance, but we would still march with the teachers with to get what they, need. what they need. And I don't yeah. see that, but I believe it's coming. Yeah. Now, somebody, uh, I'm almost at the end of the show, okay. I remember somebody asked uh, Loretta uh, King's, uh, Scott King, why <laughs> did you want everything at the same time? And she says, well, they could only say no once. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. That was neat. But that's it. You got to work toward all of it at the same time, or they will they try to divide you in the split things anyway. Right, and and what you split your energy, it you see? Down, yeah. So so things are not. Um, you can't yeah. sneak nothing in either. No, we have occasionally tried yeah. to sneak things. Yeah, that's in. true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we tried anyway. Well, but, yeah. But uh, I think it's going to get better. I think mm -hmm. that. I really believe the natural disasters are going to be the things that shake people up and move them on into mm -hmm. doing the things that they should do to help others. I really do. I really believe that. I've believed it for 30 years. Well, I'm thank you for your professional input here. It's <laughs> if it's hard. professional, it's kind of <laughs> personal there. <laughs> but do you think that uh, we... No, I, I maybe so. But lots of times we're influenced by what we know over here what comes out 
do oh. here. <laughs> Over here, and we just think it's our idea. That's true. Idea. We think it's ours. It's not ours at all. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping you're going to come back here. Oh, I would be glad to come back when... Next time around. It would uh, be neat. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you mm -hmm. so much for asking. And uh, you're home sometimes? Yes, in the summertime, not much. Not much. <laughs> Wintertime, uh -huh. you know, after like September, almost all the time, mm -hmm. I'm home. So, so do, do, oh, here, you went to the computer age. Oh, um, yes, two you. months, I'm a computer person. Uh, right, we now have emails yeah. since the last time, yeah, so people can. Yeah, I just got a computer two years, uh, two months ago, and uh -huh. I'm doing pretty well. I yeah. can email. Yeah, so if you and I only have to call the repair touch. people very often right now. <laughs> yeah, so when you want to get in, in touch, touch with, with me, uh, I believe that's correct. I hope it is. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, you call myself, you see, so <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like your phone number. You don't really remember. I think it's that. Mm -hmm. We only have a really small town, and Inland is the one that has the rights to the mm -hmm. telephone and to the net. To the net, yeah. Yeah. And so, but if somebody was really looking for they Hannah can get Shibushan, me to that. Um, so I don't have to be home because the message will be there when I get there. When you get there, yeah. yeah. But you know, most people want things like right now. Well, right you know, now. right now things don't last. My mama tells me. That's good. Good things true. take time. Take time. So if you can get a hold of Hannah <laughs> Shibushan, just wait your turn. And in the meantime, you know, call the station and. And they can call me about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, doesn't have to just be a reading. That's just exchange true. information. Information. Because I'm an information exchanger. Yeah. That's very true because yes. I'm glad you said that so we can close it mm -hmm. off with that. Usually when, when we have a psychic telephone number there, people expect for you to tell them something um, on a psychic level. Mm -hmm. But we do actually visit mm -hmm. with people yes. and exchange Exchange information. information. Yeah. Because that helps too, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can call us even oh, if yeah. you don't. You know, or email want to us. Have a reading, yeah. Or email mm -hmm. us. Be glad to share. Yeah. And, and shake and move sometimes. <laughs> you know what? It's what? been a wonderful visit. Uh, well, I'm hungry, so. Well, I'm not gonna say I'm not because my stomach's saying it is. <laughs> it is. So we we're gonna go for dinner, and um, we'll see you again next week. And thank you for no. visiting with this little chat that we had. And thanks for inviting me. We're gonna go eat. Okay, that's okay, wonderful. Bye. I'm ready. Yeah, bye.